Hey everyone, it's EJ with Anglers, and I'm here today with a very special guest. This is my buddy Bill from BKD, and in that spirit of the light tackle event, um, we have Bill, who I consider an expert um, out here on the bay, who's going to give us some tips and tricks on light tackle jigging, and we're going to talk about um, colors and sizes and locations and some of the top tips that you may have for someone who's either experienced or who's brand new to the sport. Um, so Bill, um, let's, let's basically kick it off with um, general topics. Like what, what are some of the things if I'm getting into light tackle jigging that I would need? Well, obviously the best thing you need, the first thing you need is a lure that the fish will eat. Yes. You gotta catch a fish. <laughs> Yeah. But, but there's a whole bunch of tools that you need. You obviously have to have the right fishing rod that works for that application. You want a great reel. And I would always say that people, people a lot of times will start out, well, I'll get this, I'll get this. Yep. I will say, get the best you can the first time, yep. I'm best that you can afford, right. because it will last a long time and serve a purpose forever and ever you know and and uh it is key to to catching fish gotcha so uh, so so bill is spot on um you don't want to buy a toy you right. want it you want to get something that's going to last especially and for jigging a thousand percent yeah. and and there are tons of options that are that are within a decent price range even for someone who's, sure. who's new to the sport Brand and then yeah. you can go from there so so get in get your feet wet um learn what works what doesn't work, what feels good for you, and then you can kind of build on that, right? Right. right. Um, so let's get into some specifics, and we, we'll jump around a little bit here. Okay. But um, so, in terms of a rod, like what am I looking for well, as far as a rod is concerned? You want a rod that has a, at least a, uh, um, a fast action tip. Yeah. Is, is number one. Today, it seems like rods have gotten longer. When I started jigging, my rods are six foot that mm -hmm. I, I still have, and I have some six six and yep. some 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 six eight rods, but I find myself going back to that six foot, six foot yeah. three rod. But they're hard to find nowadays because I guess how they're making the sensitivity of them. Mm -hmm. Obviously longer rod you can cast yep. further. Yep. So so obviously the the rod that is comfortable in your hands is important if you're you know, I've seen kids struggle with, with a large rod, and mm -hmm. then, so that, that, that all has to be figured out. But, but yeah, I think that um, um, make sure you have at least a fax, uh, uh, fast action yep. or a extra fast is even better, I yep. believe. Yeah, I, I agree a thousand percent. So, and then you can get into the whole, you know, debate on should you use a medium heavy, should you use a heavy, and just like Bill said, it's going to be personal preference. Um, what we do a lot in the store is we'll we'll actually put the rod in someone's hand. How does it feel? We'll right. put the reel in their hand with the rod and set it up as a combo. How does this feel? So it's all going to be based on. I mean, if you ask ten different people, they're going to give you ten different, different answers, answers on on what works. And there's millions of videos out there on on recommendations. But I agree with you. If I had to say there's one thing that you want in your rod, it's you want a fast or extra fast action on yep. that. So and as, totally far as, as far as the medium or the medium heavy, personally, I think if you're starting out, I would lean towards, towards medium heavy. Yep. You want to be able to land the fish without stressing it. Yep. Um, and you can definitely do that with a medium rod, but, but if you're new at it, I think yeah. that that stronger rod will help you wear the fish down a little better and 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 give you more confidence. Gotcha. Even. Gotcha. So. Yeah, that's that, that's excellent. Um, so let's talk about the actual jigs themselves, the soft plastics and so forth. I'm a huge fan of yours, as you know. Thank you. I, I use BKDs all the time. They've they've done really well for me over the over the years. Um, talk about a typical setup. Like, how would you set your your lure up? Okay. Well, obviously, you already have your 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 line that you're going to use we can talk about that a little yep. bit it's nice to it's nice to use a braided line it'll give you more sense sensitivity yep. it cuts through the water it doesn't drag as much yep. and, and and the right pound test is important also mm -hmm. but i would also say that nowadays with some of the real thin lines that's what you're looking for okay. so a lot of people started out using you know 10 pound and they still do and that's mm -hmm. great go to 15 maybe but the real th 
deal there is you want to make sure that the current's not pulling your line mm -hmm. and the thinner the line the faster it gets to the bottom it cuts through the current the wind yep. all that will help you catch more fish if you can control that cool what pound test do you like well actually i i i typically use 15 but i i think you, i don't know the i think it was champion braid okay. that some of their uh, uh and and i got it here some of their lines are extremely thin so i was able to go to 20 and the reason i wanted to go bigger because i fish florida yep. sometimes and you catch a big fish and you don't know what you're going to catch so i felt if i can get a 20 pound test line that's about the same as the 10 pound test that everybody's using up here it's a win-win for me yeah yeah and and so i just brought something up too so um you can catch more i'm my head since i live in this area is is focused in on striped bass right um, but you can use this setup for jigging Everything. up yeah. all kinds yeah. of stuff i yeah. mean even catfish that's become uh, yep. a big thing yep. over the last that's, you know couple of years good so. point and like i said some of the some of the companies are coming out with very thin lines in that 20 25 and 30 pound test line that are equal to what we started with back yep. when it was you know getting hot and everything yep. it was you know Very the, cool. but the first time i ever went i i did have i fished the uh, susquehanna river um up in pennsylvania so a lot of rocks and everything so i had 30 pound test braid the guy i was fishing with he s noticed it right away that I was having, you know, c current drag. He yeah. said, you need to, and I, and I did, you know, I okay. certainly went and got, you know, well, I think I went with 12 at the time, but, um, yeah, it, it, it makes a difference. Gotcha. It really does. Gotcha. So let's, let's sort of, I mean, cause we can go down all kinds of different rabbit right, holes right. with this, but That's let's true. focus That's in true. on like striped bass. Since Stripe this bass. is a local yep. thing a around here. So let's talk about, we talked about the, the rods, um, in terms of reels, you know, if I'm on a boat, I'm typically a 2,500, maybe a 3,000, um, something like that. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah. It's typically the same reel. Just one yeah. holds more line. Exactly. And, and you know, that that's, gotcha. that's the difference. And we talked about the, the line, and um, let's talk about the leader. So, so what's your thoughts I on like the leader? I like fluoro, but, but I'll use whatever, you know. Gotcha. And, and, and I, pr I pretty much use 20 pound, except for in the winter time or the early spring, then I'll, then I'll go up to 30. Yep. And, you know, the, sometimes I'll just use 25 and 30. The biggest deal there is we don't hardly ever land with a net yep. and when you grab that leader you don't want it to be too thin <laughs> that's true cut you, you will learn yes yeah, so <laughs> so, for sure for and, sure. and and striped bass aren't really leader shy yep uh i agree so, i agree so you you have an option you can do fluoro or you can do one mono. of the important yeah. things and believe me i didn't make this stuff up or i didn't develop it or learn it but but i've learned it from talking to other people mm -hmm. and it's important to have a leader that will go back across the, the bass's back mm -hmm. so the fin wouldn't cut your braid yes. because braid is thin. It's not as abrasive resistant. Yep. So, 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 you know, when you do have a leader, I mean, I've been fishing before with a 18 inch leader cause I was too lazy to cut it off and, <laughs> yeah. and, I'm but, but, but you can lose fish oh. if that, if that, uh, braid is going across the, the gill plates, you know, the, the bridge pilings. <laughs> the, yeah. Yeah. The dorsal fin. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. For sure. So now let's get down to the actual lures themselves. So on the table here, we have some examples examples of some BKD lures. We have some skirts. Bill, talk us through like what you would typically put together. Do you skirt? Do you not skirt? What size I, jig heads and that sort of thing? I don't start off skirting. Typically, if I'm going out, um, a lot of times I fish with people that are local to this area and they're yeah. already telling me what, but, but, but typically I will start off with white. Okay. With a white BKD. And if that doesn't work, then I might, depending on the clarity of the water and what mm -hmm. have you, I might just go ahead and try the chartreuse. There are two biggest sellers. Okay. However, um, LY Glitter is probably my favorite to use 
because it seems like when it's on, it's on. Yep. And you know, we call that a, a more of a natural color. Yep. Um, it's got it's got some some blue glitter in it and what have you. And you know, a lot of our baits have glitter. We we kind of believe in a flash a little bit. You know, you yep. got the sun hitting the water and and you know, just like bait that are smashing the top of the water, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll see that flash. And so we put glitter in our baits um yep. but 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 that's one of my favorite colors and then if those three don't work then then we might say okay let's put a skirt on gotcha let's gotcha. let's put some pr procure on yes uh, yes uh, when they're biting it, color doesn't typically <laughs> matter there are some colors that seem to be hotter than others on uh, others on certain days yeah. but 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 basically if those three aren't working, then I'm then I'm gonna start switching yep. up. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. So uh, like I'm I'm big at the bridge. So I've been fishing the bridge for many many years, and the pattern for me over there is just like you said. If they're if they're on and they're feeding, um, they're pretty much gonna hit anything. Um, and the way that I do it over at the bridge is I'll go to a couple of pilings. I know there are fish there. If I don't get struck, something's wrong. I'm going to start to change colors right. and here these three down here have been really good for me over the over the years and, and like you said we were talking before we started the video pink seems to do well earlier in the season we talked about that mm -hmm. um, but black believe it or not and that has a glitter through it too you guys put put something in there yeah, that's that was the catch, catch fisherman yeah <laughs> it, it worked <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but just that little bit of glitter, it yes. does give you that mindset. And I think that, you know, there's times that that little bit of purple yep. will shimmer. And, and you can call just like you said, catch fishermen, you can call it superstition or yeah, whatever. Right. But I'm going to tell you my, my black story. So I, you, know, you always want the latest and the newest and you're always buying right. things for your tackle box. Right. Well, I was in that situation where I knew there were fish there and I just could not get them to bite. So I started grabbing things in my tackle box that I just didn't use and black happened to be it. And for two years straight, Bill, it was black. I've actually had guys come pull over to me in the boat like, what color are you using? Because I'm, I'm pulling them up. You so. know, that's a silhouette type thing that they that I believe they see. Yep. And, and um they, they're, they're they're not picky. It's yeah. a silhouette. They're, yes. uh, they're they're well. They are picky to not something that's bright that doesn't look natural. Yep. So it's one of those colors that I think be, be, you know, become like I say that silhouette in the water, and yep. they want to hit or they do hit it. Yep. Uh, yep. I, I have a, quite a few customers and, and and one good friend in general that that he he uses the heck out of the, yep. both in the ten. We sell a ton of the 10 inch, you know, for night fishing. Nice. And uh, it, that's a silhouette again. Yep. Down in Florida, it's a real big uh, user for, for, for tarpon at night or, or, or snook at night. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. And so uh, one, one other quick um, thought on that. So when the, when the fish are biting, yes, you, you can use kind of pretty Whatever, much anything. It's, you have. it's good. What's fun for me over the last few years is to get them to bite when they're not biting. So getting that Reaction. reactionary bite. Yeah. And that, that's what's kind Kind of, um, it, it almost feels like you've outsmarted the right. fish. I've always enjoyed the hunt. I do too. Yeah, well, for thousand percent. All right, Bill. So let's get let's get into some general high level tips for people who are just starting, or maybe they've been jigging but they haven't been that successful. What what sort of top one, two, or three things would you advise them well, uh, to do? Well, unless I know I'm on big fish, I'm going to throw a six inch. Number one, it's easier. Yep. Less tiresome, and Elephants eat peanuts too, so <laughs> so so I've caught my personal best on a six inch yep. um, three times now. Nice. Um, I think that 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 the number one thing that, that you you can't say enough is to make sure you have the right size jig head. Mm -hmm. um, I if if you're gonna air maybe one size heavier, but the idea in my mind is 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 you start off with even if the fish are scattered, you start off with wanting to put that bait on the bottom. Yeah. So you know you wanna light jig the lightest jig head that you can feel the bottom with and make contact with makes sense if you're not sure maybe go up a size yep. but you it does make a difference i have fished with people before who outfished me over a quarter ounce because i yep. couldn't believe it and then when i switched there we go you know so mm. so it makes the bait look more natural when when 
when it's the right size. With gotcha. the, and that and that's determined by the current. That's determined maybe the tide current yep. or and or the depth. Yep. So let me add a, uh, a piece of advice for people who are fishing locally here too. Bill is spot on. Um, so for me personally, if I'm fishing that bridge, because the current can rip through there. Oh, man. And I have tried the lighter um, jig heads there and nothing. Right. Um, my sweet spot at the bridge is one ounce. Because yeah. I can get it in the strike zone before I'm out of the strike zone and the fish get a chance to right. see it. So it, and it, it is does critical. rip there. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it does for sure. It definitely does too. One, one other thing that I would add as far like if you would ask me um, what's one tip, when you're jigging, the one thing that changed everything for me, um, Bill, is not having slack on the descent of the uh, yeah. jig. So I was missing fish and didn't even know it. Um, and what I mean by that is when you jig up, I was going like this and putting it down and then the you yeah, could literally right. see the, the jig head um, sinking. Holding that tension on there because it's been, at least my experience, 99% of the time the strike occurs on the fall. Right. And now you can feel that thump and then you can set the hook. Before I was doing that, there's sucking it in, spitting it out, and I, did I get a bite or not? You know, you yep. weren't sure, yeah. so. Uh, and, and especially, especially striped bass, um, they, they they are big enough to take that in their mouth and you wouldn't even know yep. it. And then if you do have slack in your line, you're gonna miss some fish. I know too is the um, type of jigging you do. Yep. Sometimes it needs to be aggressive, sometimes not so yeah. aggressive, but, but typically, always go with a, with as aggressive as you can do it and keep that line taut. Yep. I have fished with people who are just learning it and that's one of those things that's very difficult for some people, but once you do it, once you catch some fish, it starts clicking and yeah. it all starts making sense. And uh, first time I fished in Florida with BKDs, um, I'm jigging like I am up here, not catching anything. For whatever reason, I just decided I'm going to slow it down a little bit. And we start catching grouper. Well, the grouper hide inside those little holes. They only come out. They weren't looking for something. They're looking for something swimming by. They can go out and grab it. Yes. And so that was a learning experience for me. And we actually fished that way quite a bit down there because the fish hide in 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 the uh, yep. coral yep. in the rocks and they're not out swimming around all the time. So Bill just gave us all uh, an excellent piece of advice. Don't be afraid to change things up a little yep. bit. Um, you know, we go out there and we catch a fish a certain way and being fishermen, we're superstitious. We talked about that before we shot the video and all of these things, but if things aren't working, change them up. Yep. You know, change color, change your speed of your jig, change your, your jig size, change your, change your skirt, non-skirt. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, uh, patient, but I do have a lot of friends that, man, if they're not biting, I'm switching to the, I'm switching there. I'm I one mean, of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and that's fine, patient. and that's fine. Yeah. But I always would, you know, when when they're not biting, and you got three guys on a boat, I'm still th sticking with what I'm comfortable with. Right. If they start doing something by changing up, and then of course you all change up. Yes. But 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 about, you know a lot of times when they're not biting, they're just not biting. Yep. And then you do have to dig into your yeah. tool bag and make a change eventually. A thousand percent. Yep. A thousand percent. All right, let's talk a little bit about what are we looking for, and we're gonna again we're we're we can do fish in general, or we can do just striped bass. But what are you looking for in terms of areas where we would find these types of fish? Well, it depends on the time of the year, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I think depth is important. Is a lot, a lot of times that, that is water temperature. Mm -hmm. And that's where, the, you know, that's where the fish are. That's yep. where the bait is. That's where they're feeding. Yep. So, you know, in the wintertime, I'll jig up to 60, 70 feet. I don't like it really, yeah. but, but sometimes that's where they are. So I always pay attention to to how how deep they are and how mm -hmm. deep they seem to be and then of course you know you're talking to your captain or whatever yeah um the other thing is is um you know you want some structure if you can yes. find it you know a ledge uh some sometimes there is none but 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 you know they like a hard bottom mm -hmm. Uh, there's, there's, it, it's like any other fish, yep. you know, the pylons, they're just hiding. Yeah. They are, they are trying to hide and they're trying to ambush bait that's coming by there. And, and when they're in open water, 
they might be more or less looking for bait balls. So you want to look for bait balls if you have some kind of device on your boat or just birds or yep. whatever. But but that's all. It, it's all about finding the bait. Gotcha. That's, that's, gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah, let me elaborate a little bit on that. So no bigger structure in this area than the Bay Bridge. And again, that's one of my favorite places to fish. Um, you know, a piling is here, the currents come in here, at least in my experience, the, the fish tend to be a little lazy and they'll hide behind, behind the it. current. Right. And I like to fish those ledges on the pilings. Yep. And the fish tend to eat and ambush as things go by. Right. So I'll get up ahead of that start start my jig ahead of it and i'll jig until it literally falls off the back, back well then no, that's a great that's a great point too on days when they're there and there's a bunch of them there they actually i think are by casting ahead of it there are fish that will try to beat the other fish yeah, to it yeah. whereas if you just fish behind it yep. you're just gonna you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be missing a whole bunch yep. of opportunity yep because totally. all the fish are looking into that current totally agree yeah you know, they are looking for bait coming through there <laughs> they are but it but uh yeah fishing the pylons i don't know anybody almost that had didn't that didn't learn to yep. jig because it was always a place that you you knew there were fish there for sure and we get a lot of customers that come into the store and talk about uh, the bridge and man i've been out there i just can't catch anything so so a couple of little tips with that right um we tend to go to back to the same place where we caught fish before. So customers will come in, they've fished the pilings, they caught fish, they did really well. The next time they go, they'll go right back to that piling and they'll burn their whole day. The fish move, yeah. they'll move from piling to piling. So if I could give you any advice and what I tell the customers that come in here is, I'm two casts on one side, two on the other. If I don't get struck, I'm moving and I'm gonna to continue to move until I find them. Once you find them, then you can have fun for and, a while. And water depth is important there too. For sure. You know, we, we, we fished one day and you know they're there and the next day they're not, like you said, they're there, you know, they're not there or yep. they're not biting. Yep. Then you end up going fishing in way shallower water than you normally would and there they are. You there know? they are, yeah. They're, they're, they're looking for bait. Yep. And the other thing is too, especially the pylons, people, People, the word gets around where it's hot, yeah. and sometimes you have to give them a rest. You know, for I mean, sure. for at that particular spot, and and sometimes they will move, but sometimes they're you didn't even try the other places, and they're they're there. You I, just have to I totally agree with you. Yeah. And so Bill again brings up an excellent point. So have a plan A, B, and C, C yep. and D. So yep. you, you go to the pilings, or you go to a particular place. The fish are not there; they're not biting. Where are you going to go next? Don't burn your whole day at one place. So have that have that plan A, B, C, and D. Sometimes yeah. dropping off the pylons, I've done well where they're like 15, yes. 20 feet behind yes. it. You know, they're not even right on it. Yep, and that's, for sure. that's a, when that happens. And I've had days where you're going like, holy cow, if I just stayed there, yes. I would not have had a good day. And all of a sudden we drift back and next thing you know. Mm, it's yep, on. <laughs> yep. yep, good, good stuff. All right, Bill, anything else you'd like to add um, that may help some folks with, with soft plastics jigging? I just that just that, that it does take a little bit of time and you know we get you know we get people that will say, Oh, I've used your baits, I don't catch anything on them. And and and, and that can happen to anybody's, but I would say ninety percent of the time it's because of the technique. They just yeah. haven't quite learned. But once you pick it up, yep. and then it'll help you in all kinds of different fishing. Yes. Um, I was lucky enough, I grew up smallmouth fishing on a river, yep. and you're throwing, you're not jigging as, 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 as hard as you do, but you're jigging, you know, you're keeping your bait from getting hung up in the rocks, yes. really. Yep. And now we're in an open water, and and you just can't let, let you know let it sit there, mm -hmm. and and so now you're jigging. But 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 the technique obviously is something that it it makes all the sense in the world once you, once you once you once it happens for you and you start going oh I get yeah. it now I what it feels like now. Yeah. Then, I, I'm living breathing oh, proof was, of yeah. how you, addicting this can be because I was old school chumming trolling this that and the other and I ended up getting into this probably around ten years ago or so. That's and, about the same time I did maybe a little bit longer ago but but the idea there was for me was was. Um, um, 
I never thought I'd fish salt water and then I got it got to do it and 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 you know the first couple times were hey yeah you know I could do this but you know but yeah. then when it clicked when it finally clicked that I know I'm doing it right then you start catching more fish and it's very Nothing. good. It, it, is, it is addicting. Totally agree. So that'll conclude our video with, with Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thanks appreciate for having it. me. Um, I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Um, appreciate the advice. So come down and see us on the Light Tackle event. Don't forget that everything in the store, combo-wise, Light Tackle jigging-wise, is going to be 15% off. And you get an additional 10% if you trade in fishing equipment in our Combos for Kids uh, tent that we're going to have out there in the parking lot. Thank you all.